There's one thing more satisfying than making a box from a piece of wood, and that is making it from a log. I've had this piece of red cedar sitting around in the shed for a number of years now. And I suspect there's a really nice box hidden inside it. And this is the end result that we're going to achieve today. The purpose of this build is for a present. I'm going to give it away to someone who lives down in Victoria. They don't know that they're receiving it, so I hope it's going to be okay. Anyway, first step for the log is um, I've got to prepare it to a point where I've got some square faces so I can put it through the thicknesser. So I use the jointer to get one flat face and then use that flat face to get a right angle, etc. until I've got a square log so I can finally cut boards off it. Now I've got a nice flat face, I can put it through the thicknesser so I can get the same thickness all along. As this log's pretty uneven it takes quite a few passes to get it where I want it. Now it's in a state where I can start cutting boards. But my little table saw is not very deep cutting, so I've got to do one cut and then turn it over and do another. So I'm cutting the boards out um, a few millimetres wider than they need to be, because I can't get a perfect cut with this. I'm just a backyard tinkerer, so I don't have the most expensive tools available, but I just make do with what I've got. Okay, one board cut. I'll cut about four boards off this. That'll be more than enough. Now a few passes through the thicknesser again until I get the board exactly to the uh, thickness that I need for the design for the box that I'm going to build. I need the boards to be a quarter inch thick exactly. As my thicknesser is a bit cheap and nasty, and the blades need replacing, I now need to give those boards a good old sand to get them reasonably smooth before I start the project. I've taught myself the rudiments of um, drawing in CAD, and so I've drawn a design for the box and also designed a wooden lock. This present is for a person who owns and rides a DR650. So I've traced out a picture of a DR650 and now I'm going to inlay it into the timber. This is a two-step process. First of all, there's the insides of the wheels, etc. and then the bike itself into the final piece. So the first step is to inlay some of the lighter timber into the darker timber. The darker timber is going to be the bike itself and the light timber is like the light that comes through the wheels and through the gaps in the engine etc. So if I tape these two pieces together with the design on it then I can cut those out. I'm going to cut them out on a slight angle so that that top piece that I cut will fit into the bottom piece that's cut out. Very magical. I've got the scroll saw set at two degrees angle with a number three blade. So here's the first little piece cut out. I want to keep the top piece and discard the bottom piece because that top light piece is going to end up going into the hole in the bottom. Yes, I know this doesn't make any sense, but bear with me and have a look when we get to there and you'll see what I mean. I've got all the little pieces of light 
cut out. Now I can remove that top piece of board and discard it. And that darker piece of board, those light bits, are going to go in too. Hopefully, slide right in. And with a little bit of a tappity tap, the pieces go in. Okay, let's have a look at what we've achieved so far. We've got a dark piece of wood with light pieces in it, and now you can start to see some of the highlights that are going to be presented in the motorbike. Now with a bit of uh, self-adhesive spray, I can put another copy of the uh, bike design. Onto the dark piece of wood. And I've just done a couple of cutouts so I can get it exactly right. So now that dark piece of wood gets put on the light piece. The light piece is, your, is the final um, side of the box. And so I'm going to cut out the motorbike and that will go into the light piece of wood. So again I've had my um, saw at two degrees angle, cut right around the outside of the bike. And now I can uh, gently lever it out. And keep that and now it will insert into the light piece of wood like magic with a bit of tapping of course alrighty then we've now got a piece of wood that we can use for one of the sides of the box that's now got the bike inlaid into it the box has got uh, dovetail joints and I've designed a method of cutting out the dovetail joints on the scroll saw because I don't have a dovetail jig. But this is slow but it works fine. Two of the sides are cut out like this because they've got um, angle cuts. The other two sides are just straight cuts. Well, let's test it. Is my design any good and have I cut them out nice and accurately? Well, it looks a bit tight. But, ooh, look at that. Slides in beautifully. I'll have that. The lid is sort of curved um, and it's made out of um, a number of planks. And these are cut out with an angle on them as well, so they fit together around the curve. Oh dear, I got so focused on building that I forgot to film. So this is the box all put together. I made some um, wooden hinges and a wooden latch. So the next step is to make the lock. I've designed and drawn this uh, lock that has a wooden mechanism inside. And I'm going to use these pieces of scrap offcut to make the lock. And just for an added feature, I'm going to put a bit of perspex on the front so you can see the mechanism. So using the same sort of methods as I made uh, the box, I stick the patterns onto the, the piece of material that I need to cut out and just cut out the pieces on the bandsaw. 
Here I'm cutting out the latch. This is a fairly easy process. Just takes a little bit of time and a bit of patience as well. With all the bits cut out, this is how the pieces all fit together. You can see that I've made the pieces square so that I can get the alignment correct. The last part of the process then will be to cut round the outside of the lock. I've glued the middle to the back and I've just pinned the front to hold it in place so that I can now cut out the lock shape. The Perspex front of the lock is just held with brass rods that tap into the wood. It's starting to look like a lock now. Now for the key. In the past I've made the key out of wood but I've found that they tend to fail. Now that I've got a lathe I'm going to make the key out of brass. Unfortunately it'll still look pretty agricultural because um, I haven't got a milling machine so I've got to use the uh, hand method of an angle grinder to cut the shape of the key. Oh well. The end result's pretty agricultural but got to work with what you've got. So I finish off the shape of the key with the Dremel. Okay, let's have a look at this lock. You can see the mechanism through the clear perspex. We've got a brass key. Turn it clockwise and the latch undoes. Take the key out and it latches automatically with a satisfying click. Perfect. Let's see how everything fits together. Pop the lock in, press it to click and Bob's your uncle. With all the building done, it's now time to do the finish. I'm using shellac for this. This is just shellac flakes and methylated spirits that dissolves the flakes. It'll take about a dozen coats to get it to where I want it, a sort of a semi-gloss finish. So here's the finished product. The shellac provides a nice semi-gloss type finish and darkens the wood as well. Hopefully this will be an acceptable present, but if not, the person who's receiving it could always re-gift it.